Hey there, this is James Wilson with MTB String Training Systems and Pedaling Innovations. And today I want to talk about how the difference between a bodyweight squat and a vertical jump tell us a lot about foot position on the bike. Now this comes up a lot because as the creator of the Catalyst pedal, the world's first midfoot optimized pedal, I get a lot of people asking me about foot position on the bike. And when they're talking about foot position, a lot of times they'll bring up an example of a vertical jump and saying that, well, when you jump, you push through the ball of your foot. And when you're landing from a jump, you're using the ball of your foot to contact the ground and then, you know, so obviously you need it to absorb energy. So they're saying that, you know, you need to push through the ball of the foot to create and absorb energy. But the problem is, is that the, the foot doesn't only act in one way. There's two ways that the foot and the lower leg act. And it all depends on if the foot comes off of what it's in contact with or not. And this is an example to show you that. So the first thing I want to do is show you a uh, body weight squat. Couple reps here. Now, it's the same basic movement pattern as a vertical jump. If I'm going to do a vertical jump, I'm going to do the same movement pattern, only this time I'm going to continue to create the force. I'm going to continue to come forward onto the ball of my foot and push through the ball of my foot. But you can see it's the exact same movement pattern, just what the, the optimal foot position changes depending upon if I'm coming off the ground or not. If I'm not coming off the ground, then you'll see my foot wants to stay in a, in, a, in a bounce where I'm able to apply force through both ends of the arch. When it comes off the ground, when I'm jumping, I continue that force production onto the ball of the foot and then continue to come off of the ground. Now on the bike, you can see that your foot is not coming off of the pedal. Your foot is in contact with the pedal for the entire pedal stroke. So this means that pedaling your bike is more like doing a bodyweight squat and not a vertical jump. And so again, you can see that there is an example of using the same exact movement pattern with a different foot position to create and absorb energy. So saying that you need to be on the ball of your foot in order to optimally create and absorb energy is only looking at one way of moving. And it's not the way of moving that applies best to what we're doing on the bike. So again, this is important because if you're working out, you're doing stuff in the gym to try to improve uh, you are riding, you're doing your squats, your lunges, your deadlifts, you're using this foot position and this way of creating force and applying force through the foot. And so you want to make sure that you're able to apply that to the bike as well. That's really going to help. This is also going to help your body be, become more efficient and create less wear and tear. One of the main reasons that a lot of riders suffer from knee and low back and foot and lower leg problems is because of how their lower, their lower body is trying to compensate for not having a proper foot position. So when you get the midfoot position and you balance your foot properly, now your lower leg is able to create and absorb force much more efficiently because because it's in the same foot position that it needs to be to do that. So again, just taking a look at your squat versus your vertical jump. If the, the foot only acted in one way, then you would want to be on the balls of your feet and on your toes during a squat, but you don't. So plainly, same movement pattern, different foot position, depending upon if your foot is coming off the ground or not. And then this applies directly to the bike. Since our foot's not coming off the pedal, it's very important that we keep that midfoot position, we're able to apply force through the ball of the foot and through the heel through both ends of the arch. We can change that pressure as we need or apply it evenly through both as, a, as the situation requires. So that's what your foot needs uh, when you're on the bike and that's what the catalyst pedal ultimately delivers. So anyways, if you have any questions about this, you can uh, check me out. You can uh, find me at bikejames.com where I've got a, a lot of good training tips. Uh, you can check out the Flat Pedal Revolution Manifesto where I've got a lot of the science and movement principles behind this and you can also go to pedalinginnovations.com and again learn more about the catalyst pedal and the thought process behind it and how it really opens up what your body is able to do on the bike which of course makes riding more fun so anyways hopefully you guys have enjoyed this tip giving you something to think about and I'll talk to you next time